Suppose you already have a quadrant cluster and are familiarize yourself with the concepts. A cluster can consist of several collections, which can be called databases in this context. Collections in vector databases are similar to tables in traditional relational databases. Still, instead of rows and columns of Scala values, collections contain vectors and their associated metadata. Let's take a look at the quadrant architecture. So, once you create a cluster, you can create multiple collections. Each collection can contain many points, where each point is a vector. Remember, a vector is just a numerical representation of text. When you embed your text and send it to your database, it is stored as points inside your specified collection. I already have a cluster created and ready to use, so let's explore collections. First, we will check how many collections the host has in the cluster by sending a GET request to the collections endpoint. If the collections array is empty, we know there are no collections in the cluster. You can request the same endpoint with the collection name and the specifications to create a collection. However, we will create our collection from a Python script for easy implementation. In this notebook, I will guide you on creating a client in Python that can interact with your host. Create a collection and add points or vectors to that collection in your cluster. First, you must install the required dependencies, Quadrant and OpenAI. Once done, you can start importing the dependencies. Additionally, we will import the OS module to use environment variables. To create a Quadrant client, you must store your host and the API key in environment variables. So here you can create a new environment variable named Quadrant host and set its value to your host URL. Similarly, create another variable called Quadrant API key and set its value to your API key. Once you have set the environment variables, you can make a Quadrant client. After completing the previous step, your next task is to create a client. This client will allow you to connect to your cluster, and you can name it whatever you like. To initialize the client, you must create an object connecting to your cluster. The Quadrant client is the object that you should use, and you can initialize it like this. As you can see, there are two parameters that you need to pass in, the URL of your database and the API key. For the URL, you can retrieve the environment variable called uh, Quadrant Host. For the API key, you can retrieve the environment variable called Quadrant API key. You can use the usgetenv method to retrieve these variables. Once you have done this, you can run the code and the client object will be created. To create a collection, we will use the client object. As I said before, a collection is like a database containing vectors. We will use an environment variable like quadrant collection name to set the collection name. The name must be unique within the cluster and you can choose any name. For instance, I will call it my collection. We can now start initializing our new collection using the client object. This function takes two parameters, the collection name and the vector configuration. The collection name has already been initialized earlier using an environment variable. We import an object from Quadrant for the vector configuration and create a new object named vectors configuration. The first parameter of the vector configuration is the size of the vectors. This parameter specifies the dimension of the vectors returned by your embedding model. For example, OpenAI's embeddings return vectors with a dimension of 1536. Since we are using OpenAI's embeddings, we will set the size to 1536. To enable similarity search, we need to specify a distance metric. Here we use cosine similarity. We create a new variable to add this metric to the vector's configuration parameter. Once the code is run, a confirmation message will be sent indicating that a collection has been created. To interact with our collection, we must create a vector store object. Quadrant has some integrations, 
and we have been using Langchain in the other videos. So, I will show you how to do this in Langchain. First, you need to create some embeddings and define your client, which we have already done. Then you can initialize your document store or vector store object. In this case, we will use a quadrant class imported from Langchain vector stores. Let's call it a vector store and initialize it from quadrant. It takes three arguments, the client, which we already defined, the collection name, which we will use osgetenv4, and we will initialize the embeddings with the OpenAI embeddings. It's important to note that if you want to use a different embedding model, you will need to change the size of your collection. This is because you can't add another type of embeddings to a collection that already has OpenAI embeddings. So we have created a vector store and can now add vectors. To do this, I will use some text from the Quadrant documentation about collections as an example, which I will use as input for my vector store. We must split this large text string to fit only the relevant parts that can be used to answer questions. So here we will use the character text splitter class from Langchain and define the get chunks function. The text splitter object has parameters for the separator, chunk size and chunk overlap. This process allows us to get more context for each chunk of text. We have an array with several chunks of text, each contain a thousand characters. These chunks include a part of the documentation we need to embed using OpenAI embeddings and the store in the vector store. To achieve this, I will call the vector store I created earlier and use vector store dot add texts. And here I will pass in an array of texts that I want to import. After running vector store and add text, these vectors will be added to my collection. Let's see how this works. After running this process, my vectors have been added to my vector store, and now my vector store count is 5, as they have been added to my vector database. Alternatively, we can check out the Quadrant dashboard for more information. I hope you have understood more about Quadrant architecture and how collections work. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.